Hi, um, this video is a little bit different. It's um, almost a tribute to um, one of my greatest influence, a uh, guy called Charles Evans, um, who, if you haven't caught any of his YouTube stuff, do so or buy his books. He is um, possibly the greatest influence on me as regards um, changing from oils to watercolours years and years and years ago. Um, watercolours was something I just couldn't get on with and um, I always was under the impression that to do watercolours you had to plan in advance but once you put paint on the paper, it was cast in stone. You couldn't do anything and you had to build everything up layer upon layer and everything had to be done in a certain way. And one day I was watching TV and this programme came on um, with this guy with long blonde hair wandering down a beach uh, somewhere in the northwest and he started painting a picture and talking about it and just totally and absolutely destroyed the myth um, and that was Charles Evans that was the first time I saw him do any work and his stuff is really simple looking um, yet it's perfectly well thought out it's um it's the reason why i thought right i'll have a go at watercolors and since then on and off i've been using his methods um i'm nowhere near as good as he is but I was watching one of his videos the other night and it was such a lovely simple little scene that I thought I'll have a go at that I really want to and so I got in touch with Charles I don't know him but we follow each other on Twitter and stuff like that but um, but I got in touch with him and asked him if I could make a video of my version to put on YouTube and he said yeah go for it he is such a generous man. He shows exactly what he does. Every single brush stroke. He explains everything. Takes away all the mystique from oil paint, from watercolor painting. And um, on his website, he gives away workshops. You can download stuff. Um, his book are very reasonably priced written in really straightforward language and um, as I say I'm a fan obviously but it's only because he's really really good at what he does and he's generous with it he's an excellent teacher so if you haven't already have a look at his website have a look at some of his books and get in there if anybody can teach you how to paint watercolours it's charlie okay hope you like my version have a look on um charles evans youtube channel and you'll see how it's done properly okay there we go on with the show um, as i've explained in the trailer thing i'm uh doing my version of a Charles Evans painting that I did or I saw in one of his workshops on YouTube and um, I was just so blown away I got in touch and asked him if I could do a version and he said yes because he really is um, a very generous man so without further ado I'm going to it's a picture of a little barn in Cheshire not too far away from where I am that's a line the edge of a lake or the edge of a pond band of grass 
Now, I'm putting the barn on this side. In the original picture, the barn, no, I'm putting the barn further over. The barn was always in the same place. But, what I'm moving is the trees and my drawing is nowhere near as accurate. Now in the original version there were two trees coming up that side but well, I've decided to change them and put a little window there where there was where I'm also changing the entrance I'm putting a bigger doorway um, lean to on the barn which I like to wall coming out here uh, there was a couple of buildings which I'm going to leave out in Charles's um, I'm going to put the trees in on this side bank here grasses and stuff coming along there and I'm going to move the trees over and that one growing up there To it that's not an earthquake that's me bashing the camera stand right so we've got raggedy paggedy grass along there We've got a big dark tree, which will highlight the sandstone of the barn. And behind that tree, we've got other trees going off into the distance and I'll put some bushy bits and here is a pond and in the pond is an upside down barn there we go I'm not going to put all of that in And I'm going to add some more tree bits here. Well, not tree bits, grassy bits here. Just to, in fact, I'll put a third tree there. There's going to be lots of foliage about there. So that basically is my drawing done. I'll take that further down. Lose that in a cloud somewhere. Right, okay, so that's my drawing sorted. Okay, so now we're working in copy. Well, it's not going to be a copy. I'm doing this as much as I can remember Charlie doing it um, but nowhere near as well so first things first wet the sky plenty of clean water take that down
squeeze out the brush, mop up the stuff at the bottom. Now, while that's soaking in, I'm going to mix up ultramarine blue. tiny touch of light red too much light red some more ultramarine I don't want it absolutely bright bright blue in fact I'll do it a bit brighter blue because that's very grey Right into the top. Put some more of that in. This dry is a lot, lot lighter. So you can afford to go to town with this. Not that anyone's allowed to go to town at the moment. We're still in lock. Well, not. We're just coming out of lockdown. So, dry that. And just behind these trees, I'm going to put a very thin. Peely Wally layer of yellow ochre just to lighten that bit up a bit. I'll let the sky run into that. I should actually have done that first, but never mind. Let that run down. While well, that's drying a little bit, um, I'll go into what I'm doing. Because I'm working in the style of Charles Evans, I'm using the I'm using hang on, I'm using the same colours that he does. I'm not using the same palette palette. Although, I think I bought this off his website about 10-15 years ago. Um, I'm using the same colours. I'm using ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, hooker's green, down here we've got raw umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson and light red. Now they're all the colours I'm going to use, because I'm using ultramarine in the sky, I won't be using cobalt anywhere, because whatever colour you use in the sky is reflected back by everything else. While that's going off a bit, oh I'm using the same brushes that Charlie does, Cotman one and a half inch. Cotman? Aquafine. No, that is a Cotman. It should be an Aquafine. Aquafine, three quarters. Aquafine, number eight round. And that is a number four rigger, which is an SAA one, because that's what I've got. Um, yeah, I've got a Cotman instead of the um, Aquafine one. Never mind, I shall carry on with what I've got. So, while that's going off, I'm going to, no, I'll leave that till later. Um, I'll go into the trees quite wet. I'm going to use the three quarter inch flat. And before I start, 
not being as well organised as the other Mr Evans, I'll have to clear a space. Okay, so for the trees, I'm going to use background trees. I've got yellow ochre already. Into the yellow ochre. Put some hookers green. It's far too dark. More yellow ochre. That'll do. We've got a nice summery green. And that is still damp, so it should splodge out a bit. I'm leaving gaps for the birds to fly through. I'm not worried about going over these tree trunks. I'll show you why after something which I learned from Charlie many years ago. Right, okay. Now that is the lightest shade of green into my light green mix I'm going to add some more ultramarine touch more of green and now because the light's coming from that side I'm going to put some shadows on this side over here I'm leaving that big tree out because that's going to be like the big dark tree Holly or a fir tree or something. Dark, dark leaves. Quite careful around the edge of the barn. The shadows underneath. Bottom parts of a wood looked at from a distance or a copse are always quite dark because that's where there's lots of shadows which is why trees grow tall there you go because they're looking for light they start off as little seedlings and they spend their whole lives looking for light.
Now I'm not trying to copy the original. Uh, God help me, if I did, I'd never get anywhere near. This is my version, which Charlie made, of a picture which Charlie made from a sketch he did years ago, apparently, at a workshop that he ran in Cheshire. Uh, I'm just trying to recreate some of his style using his colours and the brushes, which is what he ha advocates people to do. He is one of the most generous artists living today because he just shares so much. All the way through lockdown, he's been putting out free videos on YouTube. Um, well, yeah, he just tried to, he advertises for Dale Rowney, but then he's their leading demonstrator, so he's not earning money. So he, it's been a hard, hard time for artists this past year. Um, but he's still giving stuff away from, for nothing. On his website, there's downloads that you can just have a go at. Download them for nothing and have a go. I would strongly advise any of you who hasn't already looked at Charles's work to have a go at it. I'm making a much darker dark now. Ultramarine, Hooker's Green. I'm going to put some of the raw umber into it. And now this is the really dark bits at the bottom. I'm keeping it away from there because I don't want it to get too samey. And all I'm doing is try to put bits of shadow into these trees. I want it to look like a nice sunny day. bits at the edge of those trees. Most of this stuff up here will be obscured by the tree canopy of these trees which will be coming out. Right okay next thing I'm going to do is the barn. Now the barn has already got some yellow ochre into it already, but I'm going to put some more on. I'm going to pre-wet just the barn. To do that, I'm going to use the number eight brush, the round which comes to a beautiful point. Um, now, yellowy ochre, which is there. I want this relatively strong. Yeah. Sorry if the back of my head's getting stuck in your view. Going to be all raggedy at the bottom, so it doesn't really matter. Now, on that side, 
even stronger because that's where the light's going to be hitting it. I need to be very careful I don't touch that dark green there. So there we go, we've got the barn in with its undercolour. Now, into that yellow ochre, I'm going to mix a tiny touch of burnt sienna to make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to put it into the wet paint. Let it bleed. Ooh, that was a good album. Now I'm just dobbing this in, which is a technical term. And uh, not only am I nicking Charles's painting, I'm nicking his gags as well, sorry about that. Um, and I'm going to put some of that darker colour for this wall again. I'm going to be quite careful with the blue. I've already made a cock up, but one of the things which I've learned from watching Charles's workshops is it doesn't really matter. At one time I thought that once you'd committed paint to paper with watercolour you were buggered if you made a mistake but you're not all you need to do is flood the offending area with clean water clean your brush dry your brush and suck it out Lo and behold, there's my little lean-to roof, which I'd gone over. Okay, I'm going to into that, see how it's starting to bleed in now? Into that I'm going to mix up some of the raw sienna, no, burnt sienna and raw umber. Another little dark bit. And again, just put some doubles here and there. It just gives it a little bit of texture. Stops it being all one colour. Now I'm going to use some of the blue into that. I'm going to put a tiny touch of alizarine crimson into it. I just want some shadowy bits. I'll put proper shadows in towards the end, but I just want some really dark bits bleeding in here and there. Now, to do the sunlight side, it's gone a bit dry. 
I'll get some wet water. I'll just dampen it a little bit. Reinstate some of the yellow ochre. And in this side, instead of the burnt sienna, I'm going to add tiny touches of light red mixed with the yellow ochre, which will still give it texture. But it'll be brighter. Right now, before I go any further, I'm going to use the which I've lost me three me three quarter inch brush. There it is, lurking. It should be sat sitting in there. Right, okay, now clean myself a space on my palette because I'm not as well organized as my namesake by a long chalk. Watch Charles's videos and you'll see this manky palette that he has and the colour that comes out of it glows. He's a very, very clever man. Right, okay, now I'm going to do this bit here. So before I start, clean water, semi-clean water. too wet I want it damp just so that the stuff I put onto it you can get sucked up just tidy that bottom bit up okay now Again, I'm going to be using the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a very sunshiny colour. It's lovely. I'm going to put... I don't mind it picking up some of that green because this is grass. And it's a bit lumpy bumpy because grass doesn't grow in a straight line. There you go, you learn something new every day. Sometimes it looks as if it does when the sheep have been at it, but I can assure you it doesn't grow in a straight line. There. Now, done that, into that. Mix some hooker's green into the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to dab that on pretty much in the same way as I did with the trees. Just along the edge, this is a lake, so I'm going to get a dark colour mixed. 
which is the raw umber touch of ultramarine. I get a dark bluey browny colour. And now I'm just going to push up into the water does go in a straight line so I'm getting the line at the bottom and I'm pushing up slightly into there and hopefully because the paint that I'm putting on now is thicker than the paint already there it will spread into the other not the other way around okay the corner. I forgot to pull out little white lines there for the trees. Never mind. Right, okay, that bit's dry. I'm going to put, while I've got this dark colour, I'm going to put the edge of that roof in. Right, okay, now, I'm going to leave all that lot dry completely. Go away and have a cup of coffee and come back when it's dry and do the next bit. Right, okay, I'm back again and... Um, it's dry, I've been sitting here for a couple of minutes just having a look at it and I realised a couple of things that I should have done and didn't, I intended to do and didn't. One was I was going to pull out some clouds in the sky, uh, too late now, it's too dry to bother doing that. Uh, secondly was I was going to flick up some tree trunks into the wet paint of the greens and I forgot to do that. That is more of a mistake. Um, so what I'm going to do is do that in reverse. I'm going to go in now with the edge of my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to put in some white trunks aha you'll say he's not putting in white trunks at all trust me I, I will be in a minute okay try that out These big flat brushes are amazingly versatile because you can do large areas and yet you can pull out really fine details. Everything I'm pulling out here I could paint as well this with this degree of accuracy and there we have several oh, I'll put a little bit coming out of there as well some this side as well oh 
one of the reasons that I never really took to watercolour painting years and years and years ago uh, was that I'd been told by various people that watercolour was all a matter of planning and you needed to know exactly what was going to be the end product before you started and everything you did geared up to that. I mean it helps to know what you're painting but a lot of it is you can make mistakes, you do make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes. My dad always used to say to me, the man who never made a mistake, lad, never made anything. And it's true. If you don't try, you don't succeed. What I'm doing now, as I said before, it didn't matter going over these trees, because there you go, you just take them out again. I'm taking them out now because I want them white for when I paint them. I might even make them virtues, I don't know. See what the rest of it looks like. And there, we've got some lights put back in to where the darks were. Now, um, still using this, there's a big tree here. And one of the things I was thinking about um, was because I hadn't taken this cloud out, I was going to have a cloud across there, I've got a blank space. Most of this doesn't matter, there's going to be leaves and twigs over there. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the big tree at the back into a fir tree sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to mix up a very dark colour out of raw umber, ultramarine, tiny tiny touch of alizarin, there's my very very dark colour. I'm using this big brush because what I'm going to do is the negative or the positive of what I did before. Instead of taking out, I'm putting in and I'm just going to use the corner of the brush to put some sticky bits in
Okay, done that. Now, using the same brush again, only clean, I'm going to mix up a fir tree colour. Um, to do that, oddly enough, I'm going to start with yellow ochre. Ochre's green. Touch of the ultramarine and there I've got a different green. Now I'm going to take most of that off the brush. I don't want very much paint on the brush at the moment and I'm going to put just using the corner of the brush sort of pine tree-y things Need something, no I'll put a big dark tree, bushy bit there. Okay, got that. And because I don't trust myself, I'm going to use the number 8. And I'm going to mix up a darker version with more blue, more green, a really deep dark sprucey green and shadowy bits into there. Now hopefully that will fill the gap. Where the cloud should have been. Put some dark into them, even darker dark. Make that stand out against the green. Right, okay, well I've still got this here. I'm going to put a bushy thing down there. Again, get the... Now, one of the good things 
when you're as disorganised a painter as me is that yellow ochre is a very opaque watercolour. And because I've used this very, very thick, I can put it on top of the dark. It won't completely cover it, but it will lighten some bit. Now, the hook is green into that, some blue, and we've got yet another, put some light red into it. And we've got yet another colour green. shadowy bits go into there. What I'm doing now is I've got thick paint on it and I'm using just the side of the brush, grazing it across the paper because this is lantern rough paper and it's got a little bit of tooth to it where it's got quite a lot of tooth to it so you don't have to paint leaves you just drag your brush it's called dry brush work using the side of the brush you let the paper do the work for you some darks into that bit over there You get out of the way. Now it looks as if I'm being quite detailed, but I'm not. I'm scribbling. Don't tell anyone. People think, 
Oh, look at all detail he's gone on to with those leaves. But I haven't. Right, there we go. We've got most of that bit done. I'll come back. I've got the roof and the details to do on the barn. But before I do anything else, I'm going to make a start on the water. Okay, now. The water. I want dry when I paint on it. Reflections. are not usually exactly the same colour as what they reflect. Usually the lights are a little bit darker and the darks are a little bit lighter so there's just a little less contrast in the reflections than there is in the actual thing. So Leaving a little tiny gap there. clear water at the end just to taper it out a bit because the grassy bits will come over that now some greeny bits of reflection Trying to, I'm not matching the colours, but I'm trying to get the darker bits reflecting where the darker bits are. And I'm not too bothered about covering up all white paper, because it'll look almost glittery. Okay, we've got some reflections in. I'm going to tidy those up a little bit around the trees.
especially this side of the tree because that will be light don't mind going over the other one so much left that bit too late I'm going to have to go and do some sucking out again for these reflecty bits of light Big one, and that one, and that one. Okay. So now we're getting somewhere. Now, because I don't have the confidence to do it with my big square brush, I'm going to use my number eight, and I'm going to mix up light red lots of light red with yellow ochre lots of yellow ochre and I make a nice bright orangey colour now that is going to be for my roof Slightly over the edge, make it look like pan tiles. While that's wet, mix up some dark, dark, dark raw umber. And just indicate. worry about that bit when I put the shadows in. More on this. Too much water. define that later. Now I'm going to do the windows ultramarine blue lots of it nice and thick raw umber lots of it touch of alizarin and now we've got a nice darky dark colour and done that for a reason just clean out my brush just dampen it and pull that down just 
same there. So it looks as if it's got some depth. And that window just slits really. I'll put another one lower down just to break it up a bit. Who knows what's there really? Now, while I've got a dark colour going, into that dark I'm going to mix a little bit more alizarin crimson ultramarine blue touch of umber in fact I'll put touch of the screen in now I've got a shadowy colour and put one of those little spikes on the top to stop the devil sitting on your barn. That's what they're for. Unreliably informed. darky bits of brick where that door's there I think I'm going to mix up a little bit of dull faded monkey green very thin Okay, now, while I'm thinking about greens, I'll get that very dark that I mixed up before and put back in the shape of that house. There. Getting somewhere. Now, some of the um, darks here, I'm going to reinstate again with this number eight brush to do that mix up hooker's green into this shadowy color and then i'm just gonna do some negative shapes into here make more shadows I always say, and this is me, not anybody else, certainly not Charles, he doesn't say things, like, well I don't know whether he does or not, but I always say when I'm teaching that you can't show any light without shade, 
It's the shadows that give everything form. say I'm not doing any detail, I'm just doubling. Splodging about. Now that is fading in a bit. Just before I stop and start doing the next layer. Oh I need some more there. Most of that top will have leaves on it. Right, okay. Um, yes. I haven't got any out of it here. I'll do it later. Um, bit of magic I was going to do, but I'll save it for now. I'll go over that light bit there and very, very thick. yellow ochre okay now I'm gonna knock that not knock it on the head for good I'm gonna have another little look at what's going on so I'll be back in a minute right here I go again and um, just been having a quick look at that there's one or two things which I need to sort out and I've been getting out of my paint box something you won't be able to see it because uh, I've squeezed it the wrong way it's called Charles Evans Sand and I bought it from Charles Evans website a while ago it's a very very interesting paint because it's very opaque if you mix it with yellow ochre you get quite a, a thick almost gouache quality and I'll do some of that now in fact I'm going to clean out that well going to use that to mix this in because I want it for the trees I'm going to mix Charles Evans sand with
some raw ombre. Because I'm going to make these trees, if I can, into sort of silver birchy things. So, we do the light side first. Okay, having got that, I now mix up some raw umber and some ultramarine. Touch of light red. Hopefully that will still be a little bit damp. Now it's a bit warm in here tonight. So, clean damp brush. And that's the effect I'm actually after all the way along, so. Just soften that edge and let it pull into itself. No, that's your tree trunks. 
while I've got the sand going, I'm going to mix up a very strong chunk of it with the yellow ochre. some highlights over there now I'm going to let that settle again so here we go again good job but I stopped then, I just had a quick look at the camera and the battery icon was flashing like mad. So, at least the video hasn't died halfway through, well, three quarters of the way through. I've still got a little bit to do, but we're nearly finished now. Fiddly bits and splodgy bits. Okay, so got these trees they're dry what I'm going to do now is with my very very dark color raw umber ultramarine touch of a lizarin there but what I'm actually going to do is the very shadowiest bits of these trees Like I've just been saying before, it's the shadows that make the light stand out. And while I've got the dark and while I think about it, finish off my reflections. It's a dark darks. Sort of still water, greeny brown colour. Raw umber. And hook a 
is green. Tiny, whiny touch of light red into it. And there, got that. Still water sort of colour. Right, we're getting somewhere. Okay, now, I'm going to move from here. I'm going to get my little wriggle out. And I'm going to mix up quite a lot of dark colour. Usual dark. Raw umber, ultramarine, touch of alizarin. And with this, I'm going to flick in some dark branches, dark bits in the background trees. And also, we'll put some skinny mullein branches coming out of here, twiggy bits. The beauty of this rigger brush, well any rigger brush, is that they hold loads and loads of paint. And so much so that I've sucked up all that dark. And you can do tiny, whiny, whiny little lines. Or, you can do quite thick lines, all with the same brush. Did that just to get some texture in there. Right, okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay. 
Now, back to this square brush and I'm going to be really cruel to it now. And in here, I'm going to mix up a yellow ochre colour, quite thick, a little bit of the green. And I'm going to bash my brush. It's all battered at the end. And this brush is at least 10 years old and it's had that done to it loads of times. some sand into that just to make it stand out against the other greens. Now, same brush, some ultramarine Remember that's the light branches and not branches, leaves. Now on the dark side, I'm going over to the dark side. I think this, again, this is not my invention at all. This is another one I nicked completely off Charles Evans. It actually gives the leaves movement. It looks almost as if there's wind blowing through them. Now, this bit's almost pure ultramarine. Okay, we've done that. Now what I want to do is just to give the trees a little bit more, well to give everything a little bit more oomph. Okay, who's Nick me number eight? There he is, hiding. Right, okay. With this very dark colour, I'm going to put a little bit more alizarin into it, a little bit more blue, made a purpley sort of colour. And I'm going to start putting some shadows in. Where the leaves 
Let's make shadows. Yes, I'll put some ivy on that one later. Now just finish off those bits over there. Some bright green. And just a flick of grass. Here. Bit of texture. I want that shadow. Right, we're starting to get somewhere now. Right, okay. Before I totally nap it up. I'm going to use this brush again. Clean water. the edge, pull out another little white bit, and a little, this is one of these things, where you keep thinking, oh that's really effective, and then you overdo it and it looks really naff. So always stop while you're ahead. I'll put a little bit in here. Okay, now 
we're nearly there. Just going to use my usual splodginess. Now, hook is green. Into that, touch a light red. Now a really dark bit at the bottom, loads of ultramarine, loads of umber, purpley colour. By putting the alizarin in, you get a nice warm colour for the very very front which pulls it forward or should pull it forward Okay, now Just to finish that off, I'm going to have some odd flicky bits. Get some light bits. Just 
to runny. Okay, now, getting somewhere, just want to put, because there's a dead bit there, I'm going to put a little twiggy thing growing. light side now very very dark dark side I nearly dropped a dirty great big dollop of burnt sienna in the middle of it then for some reason. Right, I am definitely fiddling. Just one more thing to do. Some of this dark colour. Just punch some darks into these lights. And catch up the edge of the barn.
Ooh. That's what I meant to do before. detail into the barn. There, that looks a bit like something. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave that, call it finished, and take the tape off. Right, so there we have it. There's the completed picture. Um, not a patch, obviously, on Charles Evans's, but it's um, it's got the edges off. It's got some of the things that I wanted to show. It's got some sunshine, it's got some shadows. Um, it's it's not as bad as it could have been. There are lots of things I might have done better, but it will do, okay? The Old Barn, a tribute to Charles Evans. <laughs>